Hey everybody, this is Tactical Reserves. I'm Brinks. I'm Zach. I'm Troy. And I'm Chad. Uh, and this week we're going to be doing our regular topics, and um, I don't really know what else we're doing. I guess this is the question of the week is the topic of the week, so Correct. we'll just burn through all of it like we usually do. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into hobbying. I started a Gorkonaut commission this week. Pretty cool. I did a decent amount on my throne. I still, I'm like having writer's block for the actual, like, thralls and the Silent King himself. So I kind of just moved away from it, and I picked up a Void Dragon Shard that is going to be epic. So that's that was my hobby in this week. What about you, Zach? Nothing to speak of. <laughs> Troy? Uh, I've been trying to do some work on my uh, Lord of Change staff. I don't know. I'm trying to do some cool, intricate stuff, but it kind of looks like crap. It probably doesn't look like crap. I feel he like you've said that before. He always thinks it looks like crap, and yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. What about you, Chad? Uh, I got some new paints in, and I got my shelf organized, and then I'm working on magnetizing the guns on the ATVs so I can make them easier to change in and out. Nice. And that'll probably get taken back apart and primed and stuff this week. Cool. Cool. Uh, I think... Let's see here. Uh, games played. I did a couple of games on Tabletop Sim this week. And I definitely have cut the Silent King from most variants of the list, which means that the Triarch Stalker or Triarch Praetorians get cut. The Triarch Stalker's been cut. Um, but you put so much work into the model. I know. I know. It looks... But when we're talking about it, just raw efficiency, um, the game's like. So I, lo I won one and I lost one. It was both versus Marines. And the the problem is with the Silent King, he's so swingy. You know, it's just it's just a huge it's it's hard to play pay four fifty for him for when for three fifty against Marines. You can usually get a uh, Satan in there and do something with it, whereas he can consistently just die if they really want to kill him. So and then like I said, so you're also running two hundred and fifty points where the Triarch Praetorians. That opens up, you know, was it seven hundred points? Uh, so then what I've been doing, and then the Triarch Stalker's 140, so that opens up 840 points to the list. So it's basically a totally different list now. But I'm trying, this week I'm going to be testing a double patrol list with still two, uh, it's going to be a Void Dragon Shard, which I actually think is the best shard. And because if you're not playing against Death Guard, pretty much, the the Fiona Pains are not that relevant, because I don't count six up Fiona Pains. It's, it's just not a super concern for me, like, compared to the 12-inch ranged weapon uh, with the fire through. Because you'd be surprised how often you can, like, like, every time I had my uh, Death or Nightbringer out, I was looking, I was like, okay, what if I drew a 12-inch line through something? How many models could I hit? It was always more than one versus him doing zero. So I'm pretty stoked on trying him out because... I feel like he's just gonna he's just gonna do the same thing the Nightbringer's doing and be like also pick those two models up. Have you started working on your Nightbringer yet? Yeah, it's right here. I just did. A, I literally this is like fifteen minutes. So I airbrushed it and then dry brushed it and that's it. So I saw this awesome commission or I don't know if it was a commission. It was a kid bash Nightbringer oh. standing on some skulls. I don't know. Mm -hmm. if Dude, there's so many amazing... I like that model, though. Yeah, I just realized it's really model. hard to paint and make it look good. Like, I did that, and I was like, okay, cool. It looks okay. It doesn't feel like it pops like the rest of my army, so... I'm going to figure out something special to do with it. The Void Dragon's going to be absurd. That model is going to be more effort than the Silent King. Oh, but anyway, that's yeah. my whole thing for my games played this week. Let's jump into... Did you play any, Troy? No, I didn't okay, play. I know Zach and I Chad played. played. Well, I worked during Prime Warhammer hours. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I played a game against Eldar as well, which I won. Uh, I almost got tabled. Bobby was the only model alive, but it was a Bootsin. I won like 65 to 20. So my guys died, but I... Worked got out the well. primary, got the primary points and the secondary <laughs> points as well. But then I played Zach last night and against Custodes and oh, oh the boots were it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. All of him, all of him talk about. Yeah, I wanted to Zach finally. Well, would let him talk about his list. He played the sweat and it was good. I don't know if it's the sweat, but it's uh, 
my whole theory on custodes lately has been the bikes have been the worst part. The list is good with the bikes, but the bikes are the worst part. So I was like, and the Terminators are always the best part. So I was like, maybe I'll just cut the bikes and play more Terminators. So that's what I did. I played 20 Terminators, a squad of 10, a squad of 5, or two squads of 5. So I had 20 total. Then I had the Big Daddy Telemund Dread, because I love that model. Uh, Trajan Valoris and a Vexella with extra attacks for the banner. And I don't know if I'll do that again. I think the Mize one did. It is probably just better. I made the Vexella the uh, Warlord, and he had a 12-inch aura of give everybody heroically intervene. So, Which is, you only did it once. Right. You know, like it, it wasn't was... particularly relevant, but I thought it'd be cool. Yeah. But his Warlord trait, or his uh, Relic, let him and one unit redeploy. So I put a big squad of 10 on the board on the front line with him standing right behind it. Then Chad counter-deployed that, so I just left him on board. I happened to get first turn, so I Instantly unleashed the lions on the big squad of 10 and just walked all over the board with those 10 models. And then I ended up busting all three of the squads, so I just had 20 individual Terminators running around. At one point, he had 17 because I had whittled a few down, but we had six objectives, and the mission was favored him as well when, when he split them all because everything's objective secured. It's you know, do an action, and then if you have that in the command phase, you still have that objective, get one for every objective you control. Well, I mean, he has 20 units that are objective secured just walking around the table. Yep. It was, it was interesting. Um, I think it's pretty good. I don't know if unleashing the lions on... I think you have to on the squad of 10 if you're going to play that big of a squad. That's 700 points. Oh. So, oh. like... Having one squad of 700 points that only moves six inches, I don't think will be very effective. In some games, people will just fade it. But if you bust them, then they can go wherever they want. You can advance half of them. And, like, you could spread out pretty far pretty quick. I was pretty impressed with how far they could get. It made my everything. I mean, made my... I have eight eradicators. Well, I heard you couldn't wound a... Couldn't convert a wound well, anyway. I had 28... <laughs> I had 28 shots. Three and a half turns where I shot the Eradicators, and they did a total of zero wounds. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you roll all the four-ups against Eradicators, they, they don't seem very scary. That is true. I even had a turn to shoot at a whole squad and the Telemon Dread, and no. Zero wounds. It's a, I mean, that's what Custodes are known for. They're, they're very durable. Granted, so. Bobby G fought five of them in combat and didn't take a wound. No, that's true. But he had to. But he could only kill one. I could only kill. I could. <laughs> yeah, I could only kill one back. So I mean, he got to go again, and he got him. But it was. I don't have a redeploy anymore in the book. That's rough. And with the way the rules are right now, yeah, Bobby G's busted. But the relic Leviathan. I don't think Bobby G's busted. I still think he's overpriced. Well, the relic Dreadnought doesn't have Duty Eternal yet. Also, the strategy is not going to get it. <laughs> the strategy is also not in the book, so he just has his four up and vulnerable. And when everything, oh, that's all. Yeah, but I mean, I can't make my four. Up I I think you need to. I tell him as a four up and vulnerable, and it can reduce the damage by one. Uh, yeah, and my dreadnought cannot reduce damage. So yeah, but if you it. just played the cheaper dreadnoughts, they have the built-in damage reduction. On sure. the model I for less about, points. I talked about they playing get... the Contemptor board of Strednots. And they're core, time. aren't they? They don't have it either. It's they're... the same problem. They're forge world. Yeah. It's the literally the regular... Uh, the Redemptors the, the Redemptors. the old school Dreadnoughts. Yeah. There's six Dreadnoughts in the book that have... Yeah. And they're core, aren't they? The, the Redemptors yeah. are. Yeah. I think they're they're like, all core. Like, they could get re-rolls and everything. I don't know why you're playing Leviathans. Well, Bobby G is everything re-roll. Correct. Right yeah, now, but if Bobby's just standing next to a Leviathan, that's that's a lot of points. Just yeah, I, I mean, it's also a lot of hard to kill points. <laughs> it is fairly hard to kill. Like I ended up killing them, but you know, twenty <laughs> took, took, it's, Yeah, it's twenty. But, yeah. Uh, did you miss the bikes? Uh, I think it's really tough to say. Like you really like the mo the you movement the bikes, mm -hmm. but they just for a custodes army they feel extremely squishy. Yeah, and. I was paying 475 points, and I just feel like they died every game and didn't do a whole hell of a lot. Well, they're also the primary threat. Once you remove them from the list, it becomes really hard to shoot at anything and feel good about it. Right. Because 
because they still have a two of four, and they're one tougher than the right. green. And so it really you can't, stratagems but, separate. You can't, you can't do the stratagems yeah. to... Yeah, you, I think it's the multi shots that are the scariest component for me, anyway. Yeah. The four, or the... Because everything, else, everything else is just bolter fire, pretty much. Except for the dreadnought. Mm-hmm. And the axes when they touch you. Well, they axe. I was talking about range. Range. I'm scared of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's really no uh, significant ranged fire other than the Telamon. And the Telamon does pretty good. But it only has four shots on its good profiles. So. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know. I didn't really miss them in that game. And, like, I don't know if I'd take it to a tournament. For sure. It was fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I think it could beat up on casual games. Pretty consistent. I feel like even in a tournament, you would run into people that just don't know how to approach it, like Chad. Just, yes. Just, it's for really sure. Hard. Dude, me thinking it's a about strategy, it, like, yeah. for me, my target every game I've ever played versus Zach's Custodes is like, kill the bikes. They're the easiest well, thing to kill. No it bikes. moves the most. I know, that's what I'm saying. So there were no bikes, and he went first, and then. Had it's like he wasn't listening guys. to the last that's five so minutes. God. Literally, time. that's what we were talking about. But, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I missed him. But. Like, if Chad was playing more ATVs and more bikes, like, you really need bikes to chase down bikes. Like, if you just, he could just outrun Terminators. And then Which keep, I did. But the whole he can't kill them either, so it's kind of like... Yeah, know. and they can just sit on objectives. Yeah. And when like, you bust them like that, then, like you said, they're not just moving once line. Like, right. you're moving out in, a, like, a half circle, just taking it's them a the whole It's a death blossom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just slowly spreading. Yeah. I mean, it was it was fine. I don't know. I had six objectives, and I've never felt so secure in six objectives with custodes before. Because usually that's a really bad mission for custodes. Yeah. And yeah, we only got, what, six Because you, you have to hold two to get your first five points. To get points. five, yeah. And that's rough. But yeah. you could leave the objective on this one and still control it. But, Until somebody but, else went out there. But he has bikes, so you could never leave the objective where he just take it from you. But you could leave one Terminator sitting there, and it's objective secured. So... It doesn't care that a bike yeah, at one point, shot at him and did nothing. At one point, I had three Eradicators, an Outrider Sergeant, and two ATVs on an objective, and it wasn't mine. Yeah. <laughs> and had one Terminator one standing there and just... Who just up. lived through all of it, by the way, because all of it shot and meleeed it, and it took one wound. It's it's hard to convert wounds on Custos. You don't say. I'm... Especially with minus one and minus zero guns and weapons. Yeah. Always th not going to do it. Mm -hmm. I thought my list was okay. It could have been better. You can I, tell people what your list is because I didn't. Uh, it was Bobby G, a captain on a bike, the Primaris Tech Marine, who's really good. The new Primaris Tech Marine. I really like him. Uh, is that the crazy one that picks up models? No, that's, no. A, that's an apothecary. Apothe it's not really crazy. It's just crazy that he can pick up the ATV. Yeah. If that's he plays just, the ATV. That's so. just a mistake. Uh, like, two eight, I, I wasn't, and I wasn't playing the apothecary because I didn't even think about but just move into ATV to it. Yeah, I told him yeah. how they actually play. He's like, the thing has a movement of 20 inches, and this guy only moves six. Like, how would you ever be close? I was like, you can just run back, run back to the above. Because it's at the end of the movement phase. So. so you're just like, you run up there, you shoot some stuff, they kill one of your ATVs, you run the other ATV back to him, you get another we'll ATV. get the ATV back. 20-inch movement is a lot. It gets you anywhere on the table you need to be. Pretty much. On That's, is that the most movement? Uh, is it is it twenty? Is it besides, is it 14, besides, fourteen and auto advanced? Auto advanced six. Six. Besides okay. aircraft, so it's the same as bikes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. I was just never besides mind. aircraft, I thought it, he was he was saying it just had a flat yeah, twenty. I was like, that would that's be, the yes. most movement but, uh, I think I've ever seen on a bike. I also had three intercessor squads, regular intercessor squads, uh, the rel the relic leviathan dreadnought, uh, a squad of five eradicators, a squad of three eradicators, a hell blaster squad. A one outrider squad and two ATVs, which the ATVs had the onslaught Gatling cannon, which against Zach wasn't that good, but I think it's shockingly. <laughs> I think it's the better gun overall. It's still, it's still minus one though, right? Yeah, it was still so minus yeah, one. It, minus, three of us. I mean, minus two on <laughs> turns. Well, they shot him at the shot both bikes at the one squad of five I had on the board turn one. So I got to use the him to ignore one and two. Uh, that was a mistake. Was yeah, mistake. well, I mean, what else can I shoot at? He is that's low. What's all he has on the board? It's literally all Terminator. You could just shoot at one Terminator, and then it makes it really challenging to use the strand. Yeah, yeah. Is, and, and, you're, and, and statistically, like math says, you're still not even going to kill the one Terminator. Yeah, yeah. So, like, even, I would have well, much more with, shot at even one with Terminator. the Meltas. I mean, it would have. <laughs> 
<laughs> Those they stay as a squad, right? The whole time they're on the table, they don't split like those the vehicles. Bikes. They the, can the ATVs. split, but it has to be in the beginning, I believe. So the, I think you leave the ATVs together, then you can give them minus two AP on the first turn because you can spend the stratagem to get Oof. all the tactics. That's not great against the terminators; you just ignore minus two. But in a lot of situations that could be really strong. So no, they stay. They stay as a squad. So what's your what's your plan? What's your changes now? I'm cutting the Hell Blasters because they are poo. Yeah. I agree with Zach. Uh, 160, that 165 points could have been four more Eradicators and yeah, something outside else. Outside of that, though. Uh, maybe try out the Meltas on the Outriders. I probably am going to cut the Relic Leviathan Dreadnought and try two Redemptor Dreads, maybe. They're probably the same points as the Relic Leviathan. No, they're less. The Relic no, I'm saying combined. The, between, the, <laughs> yeah, with the Relic Leviathan, the Relic Leviathan's, the way I had it was 355, and then... Contemptors are like, what, 180? Contemptors are 210, if you 210. give them the grenade launcher as well. Okay. Well, so, they could be combined 360. Yeah. And then I have a few more points I can play with, you know, like I can take the grenade launchers off the intercessors, or I can, you know, take... I don't a, think like, the Relic Leviathan's really bad. I'm good against it I, think was, it, I think it's really bad. I, it's never been bad. I like, think it's really bad in this meta. T8, 2 up, 4 up, with a fair amount of shots. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, gonna, well, nothing to scoff at. Would I still, <laughs> like, the first turn, like, I only did 5 with it because I shot at the Telemondred, and it was kind of it was kind of a bad sh shot anyway. I should have split at 2 Terminators. I was mad that my 5 Eradicator did 0 wounds after wounding with 9 of them, and he just stonewalled me. I'm like, okay, well, I have to knock it down a little bit, and I did five to it. And that should just split into two. The Eternal's really good against two damage weapons. Yeah, I don't think that's where you want to. I mean, I know the Terminator's... It's just, just, like, it's just, you see, just a, like a domino <laughs> oh, yeah. bad decision-making there. He did, he did what Chad does. Yeah, he went on he tilt, did. and he was like... He tilted him a little bit, and <laughs> it's over. It's a bad, it, it's a bad matchup, especially once he splits the Terminators, but overall, I don't think the model... If I shot bad. at two of the ten that were sitting there on the first turn, i kill two. RPG probably handles another one I, by I itself. Think, I think that's one of those things you have to recognize that even though there are 20 Terminators on the battlefield, there's only 10 those percent. are the threat. But there's only 20, so killing two is... That's that's 10% well, of beginning. his army. Well, at the beginning, yeah. there's only 15. There was a squad 10. There. No, there were 20 the whole time. Yeah. Just, couldn't see. just because you can see the other five in Deep Strike doesn't mean they're not but I had no a idea. Where, I couldn't prepare for that. I didn't know where they were coming down. You at. could kill the 15 you on the battlefield. Prepare. You can prepare for Deep Strikers. You like, can Especially with as many models as you were playing as fast as they were. Yeah. You could close out a significant portion of the battlefield. It was... Hellblasters were bad. They did nothing. I did kill my kill one of them on supercharge. But that's okay. Because you supercharge every time. Please. If they're next to some of the rerolls, you do. I mean, to get them to AP3 versus Custodes, you no, supercharge no, they're, they're them every time. They're, they're, they're AP4. AP4, four, uh, AP4. What? All you're doing is getting an extra damage and an extra strength. Um, which yeah. is... What's the strength... Is it seven or seven? seven, seven to eight. I would not supercharge. I it's wanted the two, two damage. damage. Yeah. So against the things I mean, that have four wounds to be that are. He can just reduce the damage though, can he? No, no, can't reduce damage. Can't reduce damage. And I can only reduce AP. AP and strength and But you can't ignore AP four. Nope. 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 No, 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 no. Here you just gotta stone. Just all put him on four <laughs> ups. <laughs> Which I mean I think I think you just take the one damage unless you're getting rerolls from Bobby. I think I still even without the Hellblasters, even like if I don't Waste a turn on the Dreadnought and take out two of those Terminators. He only has 18 left at that point. I still lose, but if he doesn't make all the four ups in the world, I lose less. Like, I lose it was like 75 to, to 24. 24. Yeah. And, and it he could. He still loses that game. It's yeah. <laughs> it, it probably should have been about 60 to like 40 or 35, but. It still just rough. Well, yeah, rolling hot on saves is, is, is a factor. But I definitely I think, think you I... have to understand that all of the tricks in that list are in the 700 points. And you have to deal with that. Like, that is the that is the entire threat factor to that I, list. All I knew what the threat was, it was just very hard to deal with when they're 10 separate units. Yeah. It was... And oh, it my, did what only I thought guns, it The only guns that were doing anything... Think about it this way, though. Just killing one... Or one... Terminator is almost like killing an HQ in most armies. The only Points guns wise. in my Points army that wise. can do anything like the. Would you kill ships? an HQ every turn? Sure. Can, okay. Well, th I mean, that's what happens when you shoot at one of them. You just gotta, you gotta not go. Okay. Well, this is ten 
dudes. You gotta go, this is well, 10 how do you feel when you shoot point three point? Outriders and two ATVs at one of them, and it just, is it three still? Uh, I mean, it ha <laughs> happens, man. That's what happens when you... Spoilers, that's why his do army only has, like, 25 models. Do it again next time, it'll be a two. It's 20. Three models? 23. Is it really 23? Yeah. It's 20 Terminators. A Telemon Dread. Vixella and, Vixella and, and that was it. 23 that was models. No troops. I thought you had some of the troop choices no, in there. No, oh, that was it. It's just the Vanguard. You play a Vanguard. <laughs> it's just unkillable. Yeah, nothing like I, I shot. You Vanguard. definitely should have never shot at the Telemon Dread. Ever. I did like, one turn. How many games have you seen played where just people <laughs> the the thing? I needed the I need, it was all my objective. I needed that. It was. How did it get on You needed to not be on that objective. Is what you needed. He <laughs> the, the objectives are only eight inches away from. The, uh, there's just four out in the middle. In gotcha. No man's land. I put it on the front line because I don't care if you shoot it. And then he walked into the objective. So first I didn't turn. have to advance or anything. And then he's, he's not even actively doesn't care if you shoot it. He actually wants you to shoot at it. Yeah. That is the whole point That's of that the primary model. model for well, you to on shoot my at. first turn, I mean, it was shoot at that with my one. My eradicator should have shot at that. Okay. They definitely should have shot. Instead uh, of, but I the problem know. is, shoot five of them into one you terminator. Can split the fire of each gun, and then they don't get two shots. Yeah. Um, that whole unit. But has even to still, shoot. I think you do. I just don't think you shoot the Teleman ever. Well, I think I, you shoot the Eradicators at Teleman. I think that was fine. The Dreadnought shouldn't have bothered. And I, but the problem with the Eradicators into that Dreadnought is I can reduce the strength by one. So then he's wounding on fives with Eradicators. And the yeah. damage is reduced. Well, well, I don't bother with on the... On D6 plus two, that's kind of... Because it's like... Reducing it by one is not really that effective, but reducing the strength by one... That was what hurt me. So now you're wounded on fives is pretty good. I and see. then I still can negate half of it with my four up and vulnerable. And by half, it's means still not great. Well, by math. By, by math, it should have been half. But, you know, it was... I mean, turn two, the Telemon Dread was at three, and I ignored it at no, that point. it was turn three. Excuse me. Because turn two... I bricked. He uh, hit five wounds, because you did five wounds to him on the first turn. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things. Once I bracketed him, I left him alone. But... <laughs> That's so much firepower to bracket That's a Telemon, though. Just finish him off. All right, let's do questions. Let's do questions. Okay. Oh, so, I want to mention one more thing, though, because I know we've been on this for a minute. I didn't play the soup list because after a week of thinking about playing the soup list, I've realized that guard just makes custodes bad. I agree. Because everything that you points. like, everything you want in guard, guard's inherent flaw in ninth edition is giving up secondaries, and the strength of the custodies is not giving up secondaries. Yeah, it was rough. To take so, secondary still. So it's like, oh, I'm going to bring some tanks to make my shooting better, and then you just give away, bring them down. Yeah. Or you're wearing 60 troops to help hold objectives, and then you just start giving away thin the ranks. So it's just everything I made, every list I made with guard in it just made the secondaries worse for custodes. So it's just better just to play. That was the best custodes mono. That was the best custodes list Do I played you, against. I want to touch on this before question since you brought up guard. Is there any hope for guard in the meta? Is there anything you've messed with? Um, like, you can kill Marines, but the problem is you just... Like, you, like yeah. I got a list that I'm pretty happy with killing Marines and not being super terrified of Eradicators. But it's like, you're always just on... You're just, you're just purging secondaries, secondaries constantly. Like, you have to table people on, like, turn three to make back your secondaries, and they're just not quite there. Okay. I, I was just curious because they're just so it bad seems, in secondaries, right? You it auto, does seem you auto bad. lose fifteen for bring it down and fifteen for thin the ranks. You don't auto right? lose, but well, bring them down and thin the ranks is in the same choice, so you can't. Well, you're, you're going to give up one. Of you're going to yeah. give up fifteen there. Fifteen, not thirty, though. Yeah. I mean, there's a big difference there, yeah. right? But like still, it, and you're not particularly good at holding objectives. Like Logren are pretty good, but they're not objective secured. So yeah, and everything's really good at killing troops right yeah. now. So and guardsmen. Or worthless it saves, so it, it's just not great right now. I think there's, I would never count guard out completely because the codex is super deep. Yeah, and, but just secondaries are not great right now. All right, maybe when they get their book, because there's like your own secondary. chapter specific secondaries. If you can start maxing those out consistently, it might not be worth. Might not be so bad. Yeah, giving spotting your opponent fifteen points to start the game. Yeah, well, and if if eradicators get dialed back some in the meta, that's going to open up for more vehicles in general to be able to play. And I do think eradicators will get dialed back in 
I think early if they summer. Just up their points. That's yeah. probably what they're going to do. Is just up their points. That's that's the issue. Yeah. Is you can play so many for so little yes. cost. So anyway, we can go on to questions. All right, we got uh, a lot. I do have quite a few this week. Let's let's try to keep the answers. As Zach said, let's do the fast ones fast. Okay, Easton A from Warhammer Forty K. Are there staples to an ultramarine army? If so, what are they in your opinion? Dude, his sword is on fire. There you go. He, he goes in everything. Plus, anything, anything with a gun. Anything with a gun, you know. Mounted Inter- the army. Yeah. Just shoot across the board. Intercessors Eradicators are good staples right now. Yep. There Bobby you go. Bobby G. Bobby G. Bobby G. Yes, indeed. Albert Z. I love this question. Warhammer 40K. What's proper 40K attire? Who's feared most at the tables? Backwards hat guy? Big beard guy? Skinny jeans guy? Who? I believe at one point you were all three of those. I was going to say, wants, isn't right? that just the same guy? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's just you, right? With a hat backwards? Yes. <laughs> I just wear a funny hat. I was going to say, you wore a trucker hat. Forward. Trucker hat for. Yeah. Are you. Who, who, what Big do you think? Big beard guy. Big beard Skinny guy? Skinny jean guy is not scary. <laughs> no, not so much. Well, just because he has a big beard, you know, you think he's good at Warhammer? I think it's what he means. Yes. No, I mean, like, skinny jean guys, nobody's intimidated by that guy. No. Backward hat, hat guy, huh? He's Backward like, hat guy's trying too hard. He, he's just, he's just like a guy you want to go have a beer with, I guess. Yeah. Did you ever sit down... With backward hat guy. He's probably better at cornhole than he is right. Warhammer. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever sit down... Big beard guy. That guy's here to play. Yeah. T- t- so, uh, we talked about this a lot in Magic. Like, table presence matters. Oh, God. A little bit, right? Like, you walk up to no, the table... No, that's actually... We're not going down this road. <laughs> We're not going down this road because the only thing table presence did was make people be yeah. assholes and table presence bags. in magic. Like, table, the idea good. of table presence in magic was being a prick. Yeah, that's right. not where you want to be. That's not where you want to be. Yeah, no. So we're not going to talk about it. Right. Let's move on. Moving on. Okay. Moving on. Big beard guy. He's the best. Big, Big beard, beard guy. guy. <laughs> that's your buddy. Okay. Derek R. Warhammer forty thousand. A newbie painting question. I just recently started painting units for an Adeptus Sororitas army. And the Citadel white paints seem to settle and separate much more than other colors. They do not go on as smoothly as other colors. No. Rather than smooth color, it's kind of globby, even when I shake it like mad. Yes. Has anyone else had this problem with white mini paints? If so, how do you work around it? I will take this one, because uh, this is like my favorite topic. And I sprayed a bunch of yellow, orange, bright red, and white this week. Okay? <laughs> Hold on, before you get into your super deep analysis... Everything you mentioned is a thing that happens to everybody with every can of, or everything of white yeah. miniature paint. Like you're you're not in the minority. Don't go buy another can. It's not no, just you because you're new at painting. Like that, that literally, is the thing that white happens. is. And a... If you're planning on priming or playing, painting white, don't prime black. I have a really bad yeah. day. If you're planning on painting white, white should be your highlight. First off, use gray. Let's start with that. Light gray should be your base because white, full on white, will be your highlights. If you start bright white, you have you're nowhere else to prime go. White. Or prime gray, not you, prime you, white. I would, yeah. You can prime white, but you need to base this in, as long as in gray, super well, light gray. Just don't prime black. Don't yeah. prime black. black and don't the, uh, so it's called Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. Put that in your white. Stir it up. It'll it'll lose the chunkiness. Even if you're don't, not using an airbrush? Even if you're not using an airbrush. It will, yeah. I used it in my white, and it worked great. And it's been way less chunky. So you just put it in there, and I basically took... I use my metal uh, airbrush cleaning picks... Yeah. To stir it, and I stirred it the one time, and it broke it all up, and it stayed fairly broken up since. So that's my advice there. But I I can't say it enough times. If you're painting your army white, your army is light gray. It is light gray, not white. <laughs> Don't paint your army white. So it's light gray scars and not white scars. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because of the way shadowing is going to work, you need to have somewhere above white or above your, your main color to go to show highlights and lowlights. Like, what are you going to dry brush over white? I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have any white dirt. except for details. Dirt, yeah. You yeah. can do dirt or you can do glow effects, right? But the you most, have no actual, like, yeah, highlights. The, the most white on my stuff will be the bases when they get the snow. Yeah. So, so please, if you're going to do white, I'm telling you. And honestly, if, if, you're, if you're determined to paint one of those colors, I airbrushed yellow, orange, and red over dark gray in, like, five minutes. No problem. And they can see the coverage. I mean, I got complete coverage. No problem. So invest in an airbrush. It's seriously like a hundred dollars. If you're buying multiple like you're playing Adeptus Sororitas, like you your your models <laughs> are like a, anyway, a, a whole yeah. airbrush kit, a model. Like buy the airbrush, the cheapest one on Amazon. 
spend some of that hobby money on something that, you're going to use on something years? that's going to make your entire hobby experience better it is seriously one model's worth of investment congratulations on buying a sweet ass army yeah, yeah. you do have the dopest army in 40k so sure. all right i'm done all right you sure i'm good nothing else to add i'm good Anything no. I've been really messing with it, and this week I was like, somebody's going to ask a question about white, and I sprayed yellow, white, orange, and red I love over that. dark I colors. Love that when I was I put ready. This show together, we don't talk, so when I have a topic, I'm like, oh, I bet, I bet Aaron would go nuts on this, and it's, I'm, I'm glad I put that one in there. All right, uh, Paul H. from Warhammer 40,000. I have an entire box of transfers sitting in my closet. Who else has struggled with putting them on models and just gave up? Do you want to know how to optimize your transfer life? What you do is you carry transfers around in your pocket, and whenever Chad's not paying attention, you lick one and stick it on something of his and just leave it there. That's just rude. <laughs> like his backpack or his transport bag say, take him or like on his hat. <laughs> just take them and leave them in the box because that's what I do. Now I'm just going to be looking around. <laughs> I don't. I've never really gotten into transfers. I have all of mine sitting on top of a bag. The best form of tra transfers are like the googly eyes of 40k. You just put them on shit and it's funny. <laughs> just not the models. I'm... Do some tournaments require them? No. Nobody requires them. It's just the paint. They just have to have the paint on it. Yeah. If you can do it, it looks sweet. Yeah. But... Just not something I ever took the time to learn how to do. If yeah. you can do transfers, though, you could have probably painted the freaking Mona Lisa in the time you got all the transfers on there. No so kidding. You could have just hand painted a. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not a transfer guy. I have no advice. And outside of like Marines, like I don't think it looks right on a lot of other models. I agree with that as well. Yeah. I don't know. The Thousand Suns ones Thousand are the worst. Are silly. Yeah. Like vehicles and stuff, I think look good with them. Okay, so Guard and Marines. I mean, everybody gets vehicles. Except Tyrannus. Tyrannus with the demons. I don't think Tyrannus get transfers at all. Do they get transfers too? Yeah, I don't just think demons, I don't think I got anything with demons either. No, I don't even, I don't know if Necrons have transfers. I don't think they do either. Yeah. I think it's right. like Eldar and Imperium pretty yeah. much. But no one's a transfer. And the Eldar ones are no, all just tribal transfer. tattoos. I, I'm not like anti-transfer, it's just like I don't do Pain it. in the ass to do though. We haven't really messed with it. I don't okay. think anybody here has. Maybe we'll, they don't know. I watched some videos on them. I mean, oh, I have. I've stuck transfers all over Chad's shit. <laughs> They're everywhere. Now you got Chad paranoid. Yeah, like, every time week. I'm just going to look around. Just under, under the I basement. was riding in his car one day. I was like, stuck mm. it on the door panel. <laughs> God. Neil S. from Twitter. This is kind of relevant. When are Astro Militarum going to get a codex? We don't they, know. Will they just be the last army to get one? We probably don't not. know. Probably they'll, not. They'll probably get theirs mid next year, I guess. That is strictly a guess. Is that what you're hoping, mid next year? Oh, I'm hoping for tomorrow. He's hoping for tomorrow. <laughs> they, got the, they got the first codex of 8th edition, so they have the oldest codex, right? So one of the first know, codexes. I don't know if it was the first, but it was early. It was one of the first, yeah. so it'd be pretty rude to make them the last of the next one. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would guess they probably, like, mid next year. But to be fair, it is also one of the biggest. Be I believe it was the biggest it was part of the 8th edition right? codex. It was pretty big. It's got, like, a bunch of different armies in there. but So, I don't know. Maybe they're just taking their time on it. Maybe it'll be sweet and dope and come out in January. But we'll have to wait. I would, I would venture guess that it'd be mid next year, mid to late next year. I would year. say something like that as well. But that is pure, purely a guess. Purely just guessing. The Codex isn't awful right now. There's other armies that need it worse. And really, outside of some updates on models, it doesn't need new models like a lot of other Codex do. I mean, you got it, a wide they, range of models. Okay. The one thing they need to do for Astro Militarum, in my opinion, is if they're going to make the troop choices so unique. And bonus, they need to, GW needs to have GW versions of Catachan. See, that's what I was saying. They need they updates of models. They don't really need like new units as much as some of the. No, they definitely don't need because they got plenty they, they of units. new kits. They do sure. need new kits. I wouldn't yeah. say that. Yeah, they need like updates. Uh, I don't yeah. think. The, I think the last new kit they got was like. Oh, we could go down six. We could go down that road with, road with every army except for Marines. space Marines. Yeah, and Necrons. Necrons yeah. got way more model new that's models. That's what I'm saying. I'm hoping if oh shit, they're like here's. Here's a kit for each of the. That'd be pretty cool. It would be oh, really nice kit. to see like, different troop kits. I don't think yeah. they're going to. But I don't think they are either. But. Even like three would be yeah, okay. I agree. Just upgrade Sprue for like if just to learn, like if you want to do the whole army and Cadian body armor, and just like to learn heads and guns or belts yeah. and stuff, that would be useful or plus join or whatever. Yeah, head swaps I agree. Would be helpful. I mean, after 15 years, though, they could use some new It is, is kind of crazy that they have Katie and body armor when Katie is kind of... 
<laughs> not there. We're not going to talk about that, Troy. We're not going to talk about that, Troy. Where's all that body armor coming from? <laughs> the dead body's floating in space. Oh, oh God. Oh, too soon. <laughs> Kevin H. Warner. Just a guy out there with, picking up body armor. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> out there in a boat. With a yeah, a little ship. With little <laughs> rain claws out there. <laughs> God, shaking off the chunks of body parts. Zach, Zach's there. over this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin H. Warhammer 40K. Contrast paints or no contrast paints? I've heard mixed reviews and would like your opinions. I know that Zach and Troy talk about this one. They've used them the most. So I don't like it on vehicles or really anybody that wears armor. I don't like it. But demons, it's amazing. So anything where you're painting like organic stuff, I assume Tyranids. Yep. Uh like flesh tones and stuff. And it actually mixes well with the other paints if you're if you're doing it right. Like metals, like I use uh, the retributor, retribution armor or whatever for my gold and the lead belter for my silver. And then I use contrast on all the feathers, skin, bone, that kind of stuff. Nice. Uh, the Black Templar I use, that's my favorite paint in the 40K line. I, I love that stuff, it's really good. A little bit of black Templar on all my guns, and then go over that with Necron compound. I love the way it turns out my barrels and stuff. And black. your your guns do look solid. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I agree with uh, I agree with Troy uh, as far as flat panels in general, like armor or uh, tanks or even power armor. I'm not a huge fan of contrast on that kind of stuff. But uh, flesh tones or tyranids or demons, that kind of stuff, it's great. Uh, cloaks. Yeah. Another thing I think it's really good for. Yeah, like robes and that kind of stuff. It works. Um, but yeah, well, it's like big flat panels and stuff. Though I, I've never been able to get it very nice. Yeah, I, I didn't like it. Um, I, I tried it with the, like when they first came out. I got some blue for the ultramarines to do some intercessors. And I just, I didn't it's, like it. Now the black was cool because on the guns it was sweet. Yeah, I, mean, I don't ever use guns and belts and everything. The black was great. The problem is if you're doing large areas. It's designed to do like auto shading, but really all you see are brush strokes. Yeah. Like I did a plane with it and I was So what I ended up doing actually was just having an able airbrush the same color, we just went over the plane and now it, it looks better. So you don't see the brush strokes so much. So if you do use it and you want to do vehicles, you can if you like that color. But I would use an airbrush. Invest in making your hobby yeah. more enjoyable. Back to that. Right. Back to that. I would suggest using the uh the primers that they sell for contrast. Yeah, do make yeah, the you contrast. yeah, yeah. definitely yeah, for do sure. that for do sure. Do that. I don't know if you have to, but it definitely makes the experience a lot more enjoyable if you do. Yeah, yeah. But the cans are expensive. They're like $11 a can. So you're yeah. not going to contrast and save a, a ton of money like I was originally pitched. Because then you don't have, say you don't have to buy all these other paints. Uh, but instead, you just you have to spend, spend all your money, money on, on the primers. primers. Yeah. Really, really, what you don't have to buy is shades because it kind of does that by itself. Right, yeah. It's a... It definitely saves time when you get the process down to there's good and bad with them both all right uh jennifer s on twitter how long have each of you been into the competitive gaming scene warhammer or other games before i think i've been longest i have to so for warhammer warhammer not very long but overall we've been in pretty long since well for me it's been probably 13 years since I was 20, we started playing Magic and got extremely serious about it. <laughs> so, I would say 13 years. I started Christmas Eve 1996 playing Magic. Okay. Or Torment came out, I don't remember. Torment came out in 2002. Before that. It's been a while. But I liked Warhammer back then, I just didn't play. I had models. I didn't, but I, I always wanted I to play, but I never had anybody else did, so I just played with Magic. Yeah. Competitive wise, Magic though, was really stable for a long time yeah. too. So competitive though was probably like ninety nine or two thousand when the Pokemon craze hit, because it was easy to buy Magic cards by winning Pokemon tournaments. And then when Dragon Ball Z hit, craze hit, we dominated that game too and bought more Magic cards. But Warhammer just a few years, but competitive gaming. Is yeah, awesome. we definitely have a competitive mindset. That's why. That's why we, we all get along so well. I think. Yeah, and we just tend to be. We try to play the meta because we've done it forever we always try to innovate and try to figure it out we've been doing that zach and troy are the two most want to be break whatever the meta situation is like they want to play whatever is the best thing against the off or against the meta meta. meta. 
I and, always want to play. Yeah, and you and Anvil meta. are definitely the yeah. meta. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like a hundred percent. Like that's the way it's always been. And it's also not if you're like, and if you're getting into competitive gaming, have other friends that are as competitive as you. It's a lot like, harder to just go to it by yourself. Yeah, like sure. you want a nice group. Like back like two thousand nine or something, we could tell immediately when Zach and Aaron started coming around the shop that hey, these guys are going to be serious. They like to travel and everything. Yeah, because the best part about tournaments isn't even the tournament. Yeah, that's it's that's the just travel, the yeah. hanging out, the good times, drinking some beers, meeting being, people, being out town, meeting everybody. Yep. Which goes back to that table presence of don't be a douche. Yeah, don't be a douche to try to win a game. All right, let's see. Uh, Grizzak from Reddit. Hey guys, I've been trying to expand my Space Marine army beyond the Indominus box. I haven't decided on a chapter yet. But I'm focusing on the Malay oriented chapters. What would some competitively smart purchases I can make be that I can make that work between those factions while I'm deciding? I mean, it, it would have to be like blade guards, right? If you're not trying to specifically go into a faction, he so wants which to means... be Malay. He, he likes the Malay oriented chapter. So I that's think... Blood Angels, so, White Scars, right? Well, Blood Angels, White Scars, Space Wolves, you could kind of do it with anybody. The Marines, White Marines are. But you got to be careful. So White Scars is the only generic one, right? Because like if you buy Space Wolf specific melee yes. stuff, then you can't play them in yeah, other right. armies. So we can't talk about any well, of the Space Wolves or yeah, the Blood Angels. That, you can, well, you can't do like Wolfen or yeah. Sanguinary Wolfen Guard. Or, the specific yeah. ones, that, but all the normal stuff you can play in any. Yeah. Get, so I think Blade Guard though would be the the best. Well, you get he's got Blade Guard. He bought an Indominus. Yeah, I think it's more Assault <laughs> Veterans, which I think are also in the Indominus box. Uh, yeah, assault, 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 assault yeah, intercessors. Assault. So are the outriders, which are also. And good. then, um, I think Invictor war suits are good in that kind of style of army. I like Invictor war suits. And pulsers are and still pulsers good. are still good. Yeah, as a transport, just to get yeah. them up the battlefield. Yeah, that seems good. Especially now with blade guard, you can take units up to six. A lot of people are taking five with a well, some, some sort of buffing character. If he does go into, it makes them a lot. If he better. does go into blood angels, what are some of the characters? Uh, Mephiston. Right now, I would definitely not buy into Blood Angels right now. Blood Angels are supposed to come out with the Codex in the next month or two. Next I would two, buy, so. actually, I would buy the Staples right now in anticipation for it to be no. good. I assume, well, if you want to buy, like, Sanguinary Guard or Death Company or something, sure, go for it. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff but I'm that's thinking about. stuff. I have a feeling they're going to start primarily yeah. buying all that stuff. Yeah. So if you, if you buy a bunch of... That's fair. Sanguinary Guard, and then they come out with Primaris versions of Sanguinary Guard. Then you Especially if you already things. have Primaris, and you're going to be like... Yeah, that's fair. But that's fair. I would definitely not purchase a Dante if you're leaning towards Blood Angels, because that dude is getting Primaris if I call him. Maybe. Yeah, so I, think it's, it's it's I think it's going to be board. Actually, yeah, go Flesh Terrors, and you'll be happy all the way around the board. You're saying it's definitely getting Primaris. 100%. Put, so, it under, put it on the board. Put it on the board. Well, I'm not slap betting him. Are you slap betting? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to get slapped by. There's a one person man. in the world I will not slap bet, and it's him. <laughs> oh, oh, you would slap bet him? Yes. Before oh. I slap bet Zach. Okay. okay. Anyway, saw him fly. So there you the go. Air. Impulsors, Invictus War Suit, or more Indominus. Yes, more. Round Indominus. out your numbers on Indominus. That's like in somebody this week was talking about wanting to buy more Necrons, and they were like, "I bought an Indominus box." Um, what should I? What should I get to expand on my Indominus box? I was like, another one. more Indominus boxes. Like yeah, the True hat. Choice is great. The HQs are great. The Scorpec Destroyers are great. Like I feel about Marines, and they're now. cheap. Like the Indominus boxes, even the Marine side are are way more affordable than individual models. If you find somebody yeah. breaking up those boxes, yeah. Yeah, the boxes, Round out your numbers. The box is 200 and like three the, eradicators are 50. I mean, the assault intercessors are great melee units and they're also pretty good objective holders. Yeah. They fit well in a, a what's it called, impulsor. Mm -hmm. So the blade guard vets, your bikes are. Yeah, solid. he said the outriders, that those yeah, things are crazy. So yeah, so, yeah. You, more Indominus box. Um, I just feel like you can't go wrong with the Indominus box. And really, box. the way Warhammer works, you don't want to be all one base. So even if you are going heavy melee, you still want to have some background shooting to back you up. Like yeah, eradicate buy... some more Indominus boxes. Yeah, well, that too. <laughs> well, I mean, you can buy normal intercessors as well. Yeah, I mean, if you're leaning into primaries, you're never going to go wrong. You're gonna, always going to have some amount of primaries and assessors. Uh, I would, honestly, I'd wait unless you're going to buy another Indominus set of Marines. Check out that new Blood Angels Codex because it's coming out in a month, maybe yeah. two. 
I think it's December. Blood Angels are uh, awesome November, December, too. When Zach was playing Blood Angels, oh, it's man. such a cool, yeah, it's such actually, like a versatile army on the table. So as long as they don't hand hamstring them, they showed good. a timeline of four, and I can't remember. It's Death Guard and somebody else in December for sure. Death Guard's gonna be the last one, and then Death, it's Death out. Company or whatever Anvil's army. Death Watch. Is. Death, Death Watch. Watch. Death Guard. Are be, so okay, so next month will be Space Wolves. Blood Angels. Blood Angels. Yeah. Sure. They'll come in November. Yeah. Who knows when like, in November? It could be November 31st. Could, oh, it would be November? Okay. It could yeah. be Black Friday, because I can just feel right. them doing something like that. Well, so. uh, but if it's Space Wolves, yeah, because they don't Angels, already two of the melee-based yeah, units, so it might be best just to unless, save, save some dollars and then just know you want. Unless you want to stick with but, one of the main factions. That's yeah, not get another $8 box, like. wait till January. Mm-hmm. Or uh, the other thing is... Just pick a lore that you like and and try to buy into some of the stuff that that might not get updated. Because if it's good, it will not be available. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. Like you're not going to get anything. That's the risk you run. But I I'd rather not be able to get the models I know I want than buy models than be disappointed with what I got. True. Yeah. That's true. And uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, shout out to Full Moon Games, local game store. How much calling your game store and just saying, "Can I put money down to guarantee my pre-order for this?" And stuff like that. And if they're in, they have the Games Workshop, you know. Yeah. So if it's a, if it's new game. models, like we're if it's new models, like they yeah. get Primerified, like call support your local game store. Even if you like, our store is cheaper than the GW website. Yeah. yeah. So and, most and our guy, he will usually he'll, he'll order price. something for you, and then he'll order a second box so we can put it on the shelf. Yeah. yeah. Just so we have some availability. So because he knows how competitive we are. For support order support your local game store. Yes. Seriously, yeah, always. especially in this hobby. Especially so, this time, or they're not, I, you yeah, know. I have one last option here, and it's the best one yet. Like chaos. corn? I, I was going <laughs> to say, get some green stuff and spiky <laughs> bits, and you did it. Your <laughs> Darwinist box is 100% better. Oh, God. <laughs> is it corn? We would have never guessed. It could be we, corn. It could be corn, for we sure. We would have never guessed. He's like, what you really need is a bloodthirster. <laughs> what you really need is to What you really need is to not play Space Marines, is what Troy's thinking. No, chaos Space Marines. It's still in the name. Okay, yeah. well, this this question, this next question will be right up Troy's alley. Oh. Uh, Robert G via email, which I have a problem with this because it's a Bobby G asking a demon question, but n- nevertheless, is this correct? A demon prince with dual talents has seven attacks, eight with hateful assault active, each doing flat two damage. With damage not spilling over, does that mean he can kill a total of seven? Eight with hateful assault, one wound models, but inflict a maximum of 14, 16 with hateful assault, wounds on, say, a 20 wound model. Yeah. Yes. That's correct. Yep. Yep. That's Max. exactly how it works. Max Max checks qu- out. Next question. Is it, is it worth the extra five or 15? Dog. No. Don't start oh, hating oh, 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 <laughs> He didn't ask that. He asked if it was what? If that's All right. Works. Yes. You, you stated it exactly correctly. Well, that's yeah. good. He still shouldn't be playing. He should be playing Ultraman since his name is Robert G. But that's neither here nor there. Maybe he plays both. No, no. Maybe right. even Bobby G isn't a fan maybe, of the maybe. He, maybe he has a demon <laughs> prince, Bobby G. You shut your mouth, sir. <laughs> he could. He's working for the Silent King now. The real G. Oh. God. DJ Sizzy K. Changed his life. Anvil from work. Quick thought. When is Chad going to get not boots again? <laughs> not again. <laughs> he knows when we record, so. Uh, well, was it this week? Because it definitely, I got definitely got boots. It's rude. And boots last week too. Oh man, <laughs> weeks of boots, and I'm gonna get boots by Troy this week. That's how I feel. Romeo J via Twitter. Our question of the week. It has now been a little over three months since the release of Ninth Edition. How do you guys feel it is going? How is it different from Eighth Edition? Do you think it is balanced so far, and how can it get better? This is our topic of the week. This is why I made it the topic of the week. Question. Ninth edition, three months in. Okay, so I'm going to do my quick thoughts on all this, for, on my opinion. Um, I feel like it's going good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's different from eighth edition entirely. It's yeah, all it focused is. on objective. It's not focused on killing anymore. It's, it's a lot more tactical, right? Uh, do I think it's balanced? No. Uh, right now, ninth edition codexes and a very few late uh, psychic awakenings heavily skew some yeah. armies and yeah. crush other armies to where like it is the least balanced I've seen 40k in the last six to eight months probably. The codexes definitely feel 
like ninth edition codexes where the rest don't. Like it's basically it still feels as bad. Eighth Marines felt. We also say it still is. Yeah, but now they're ninth edition Marines. Like they're the ones that got upgraded. Yeah, that's true. Um, And and how can it get better? How can I mean? I think it's all about just getting codexes out. Um, Yeah. And I really feel like GW's play tester system is not working. No. Uh, It's been like this. I mean, it's the. I, I, I don't understand how such a large company can have, like, I know that the testers are doing it for free, right? Um, and they get to play in the tournament scene. Yeah, and they get to play in the tournament scene. Um, and they're just like, like, it definitely feels like... Time like, out. Yes, the testers. The play uh, testers? Is the pro players. Yeah, they're just the best players of 40K, basically. So, in Magic... To be a play tester, you have you, to be banned for a year. You can't even see magic cards before they come out unless you're banned from tournaments. Yeah, you, and there's a room. I've been to Wizards of the Coast. There's like a double door you can't go by or like you can't play for a year in tournaments. But they're I, don't having, know, I don't know if that's the problem, but that is a Well, they're having problems too because they're banning cards left and right. But. Yeah, Wizards well, that's because they want to sell more cards. True. But so I, I, I think it's the balance. The issue is right now we need more codexes, right? I but, think that's the main issue. The the other side of the issue is is we have consistently on all of our recent releases had some really crazy shit come out that needed heavily errated. And I feel like and I'm not even talking about the stupid thing like the ATV. I'm just talking about like stacking so many effects and people saying, Oh, we didn't see that. It's like you're literally the best players on the on the planet. You yeah, you had to have seen it, right? Well it, I mean, who knows how long we don't know how long they're testing or whatever, but Right now we're developing a meta, and you can't do that in a small enclosed area with a few players over a small amount of time, right? Yeah. So it's easy to miss that kind of stuff if you're not looking at it constantly. I, I definitely think as far as the real the real answer to balancing 40K, which we can go back on topic after that, is, is connecting these players. They need to play online, all of the testers. And I don't know how big the tester group is, but it needs to be a lot larger. Mm-hmm. Um, or just real, just literally do what they did with Sisters, Pre-release the codex. Let people yeah. try to break it. Release the PDF. Let people try to immediately break it on the internet, and then do their print and a rat beforehand. I think the problem isn't so much GW and their testers. It's they're catching up. Like a lot of people, like us, a move from competitive game like Magic into a hobby game like Warhammer, and trying to break it. It doesn't have like, the same. Yeah. Warhammer is just not going to be as efficient as Magic. It's just not. Like, there's a ton of rules, there's a ton of models. The game's not supposed to be played that competitively. That's not what the design of the game was. It was for. intent to make stuff look cool and paint. But this year, their codex is the tournament codex. So it is designed to be competitive now. Now, but they, they also, have but, teamed but up. But this is like with, year one. Like, yeah. Yeah. Magic was fucked year one. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's fair. That's fair. There's a card the, that draws three cards for one. For the first yeah. two years, he took it to, before oh, yeah. he released it, he took it to, like, colleges and had them try to break it for smart I mean, kids. this is obviously not year one competitive right. for Warhammer. What you're saying but is it's accurate, been, though, it's, yeah. It's I mean, still in its infancy as far as competitive goes. I'm willing to give him some time. And it's not like... And it, the game doesn't come out unplayable. Like, a Black Lotus would destroy magic. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Destroying they're not doing. They're not. They're not making it. black lotuses. Yeah. In forty k. I mean, eradicate, I don't eradicate, know the the good. the dreadnought with the iron hands when that first came out. It was pretty good. So it was but mathematically it, unkillable. I mean. Yeah, that, 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 that might have been. <laughs> You're right. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we can go back on the topic. I just think the issue is there needs to be a better testing system to overall. Balance. Well, how, how do you guys feel it's going? I think it's going good. I think they did a really good job on ninth yeah. edition. The biggest issue I have is if you start to fall behind in primaries, it's really hard to dig out of it. And I think we needed more secondaries overall. It needed to be about yeah. five, I don't know, five or five to ten what more like, secondary I options. Think, I think the secondaries being categorized the way they are is the issue. Because you're limit, if you're a Achilles army, you're, it's all 100% punishment. So like Astro Militarium that wants to skew heavily into killing still is screwed over on secondaries, right? right? I mean, I think that part of their design, though, is to make you have to you do choose. something other than... But you can't just shoehorn into one thing. 
Do you think codexes will fix that? Because we've seen that they're giving. That's everybody. what I'm hoping for. So I, I agree that secondaries are not a problem, but they aren't. I don't think they're quite to their full extent the best they could I be. I just don't think they're fleshed out quite enough. Yeah, that's what I'm, I think they need a little more work. But if the codex is going to fix that, then maybe they don't. Because they put three in the Necrons one and three in the Space Marines one. I think. Mm-hmm. No, Necrons got I think two. Space Marines got three. Yeah, Space Marines got more than Necrons. But two of the Space Marine ones are really bad, so. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, they have to be... They have to be good. They need to be good if we're going to... Yeah, but the third one is really good. The problem is... You don't need to make the Space Marine ones good. They're already got good ones. The problem with doing them by codex like that, while I like the idea of it, it super skews it when Necrons gets their codex, and then Tyrannus doesn't get theirs for a year and a half, so you have an extra secondary, or you can just... You're like, oh, I have nothing else have to do. To I'll that. do this, you know. No, I totally agree. I mean, that kind of sucks. Like, it would be really cool if they just released all the Codex secondaries early. Yeah, and I'll say, like, the, the big thing is... nobody's going to buy the book or the secondary. I agree with that. Agree with that. Yeah. Is the reason why, like, we're having so much fun, I feel like, is... Uh, you're playing Space Marines. You're yeah. playing Custodes and Space Marines. Troy's just having fun. Anvil plays Space Marines, and I'm playing old, Necrons. Old yeah, but I'm saying rules for you aren't as good. Oh, for yeah. four out of five of us, we have either updated or really solid rules. Yeah, I just quit playing the bad armies. Yeah. yeah Duh. <laughs> so, Which I don't think you should do. So our experience with Ninth is. Edition, like, I really was enjoying Chaos Space Marines, but I also feel like Chaos Space Marine or Chaos, with, with a heavy, heavy emphasis on Space Marines, is probably top tier army, so... Yeah, yeah, Space Marines is really good. Yeah, it feels crazy. I don't so know. It, it feels like it's fallen behind compared to the new Marines, but yeah, the new codex the, is very seem when you're shooting zero AP guns and they're shooting back the same gun that does minus one or two. You're like, well, yeah, it's not cool. Even even Necrons, like I, I do think Necrons are gonna go way down competitively mm-hmm. uh, once more codexes start to come out because their power level there is a significant difference in their power level uh versus the space marine codex so what i'm really hoping for is they wrap the space marine stuff and they release everything on necron power level because the necrons i feel like are in a much more reasonable place overall um but i'm i'm having fun but like i said i'm playing i'm playing one of the ninth edition codexes and it's like i'm having such a good time painting models i don't even care how do you uh feel competitive wise is different from eighth. Like at the end of eighth, last summer. Well, okay. let's 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 exclude the Space Marine portion, the the, the post COVID meta, right? Right. Sure. Because we didn't get in pretty much any games when COVID first started. Correct. So before that, it was amazing. It was I felt like it was extremely dialed in back then. But it was killy. It was still a hundred percent like was you were it, alpha but was strike. It, balanced? it was balanced. It was balanced around killing stuff. Well, yeah, it was. But you would like the way you if the way deployments worked with who went yeah. first and who went I do, second. I do miss the alternating deployment. Uh, I like this deployment. I think it's more tactical. But I will say that for balance sake, the other way of deploying definitely controlled. But it was also super killy. So it was important to know who got to shoot first and adjust their deployment according so they had it felt like they had put enough band-aids on eighth edition by then to where it was holding together it still was all glass cannon kills right Mm -hmm. it was just where you one did you want to alpha strike or beta strike pretty much but now i do feel like i like the tactical ability like i love that objective secured feels like an important thing because i felt important last night I did, sure. never cared about objective secured yeah. the entire time I had been playing before that. I like that it, everything shifted towards Terminator style models. Like yes, those are sweet models and they're good. In, they're good in the books and the lore and stuff. And it's just like they were trash. Is it a different? Game? And you can actually play. It is a different game. For and sure. you can actually your army looks so much cooler on the table. Like I have found the need to spam in this meta like if anything like it, obviously if it's broken we're excluding broken spam but like there you don't really when you go to list build right now you want to have uh, you want to kind of almost be a jack of all trades yeah. army versus before you just were like i'm gonna do this one super killy thing as much as i possibly can and now it's like well 
well, I need to hold objectives. I need good movement. I need, you know, I need assassin style models. Like, it feels cool to build your army and see them on the table. Like, the armies look so much better on the table. I think my biggest problem with ninth edition is the secondaries. Like, I think there needs to be another. I don't know if it needs a whole other section or one more option in every. I think one more option would be better. But it, maybe... it just seems like we're a little light. Well, but they need I to get rid of a bore the witch. That's about the only thing for me. Uh, the bore the witch is bad. I think all the psychic ones are bad. I think they were worried they were going to be too powerful. Well, that's what I mean. All of the psychic ones. Yeah. I, I think guess they were not worried they were going to be too powerful and they ended up being just not playable. Yeah. That would be my guess. Yeah. I think if we get the secondaries a little bit in a better spot. How many were there life? in eighth? What I would love to see oh, is... About 20? Well, well, there were none from GW. Yeah, there were none. I'm, it was I'm all glad we have game. days and not cards. I'm definitely 100% glad of that. Yeah. The cards were bad. So, what I would like to see in secondaries, what I would have loved to have seen, is that there'd be like a universal stratagem where I could spend like two or three CP pre-game to take another secondary in the same bracket. Mm. Um, so, like, you're spending command points, but you, if you are Achilles, you can double in on that. Or if you're a very movement-based army, you can double in on that. But it comes like, at a cost to CP. Take Linebreaker and Domination. Yes. Or something like that. Um, and then that makes those secondaries feel a lot more open. Right? Um... It right. makes it feel like there's a lot more of them because you can double dip in one of them. Which, because if your army's good, know. That's that's borderline pay to win, and I'm not. Well, it's not. <laughs> it does seem powerful. I see what though. Zach's saying, especially seem... when armies are starting with you know ten to eleven, like three. That's four, a huge cost. Like three for Zach to take double kill in Ashton Militarum. I think you do it every time. Yeah, but that's because he already hemorrhages fifteen points. But what if it's like? Same, but... but what if it's like five? Is that too well? Much? Five's too much. Oh, five three, three, the... three is question. Like three is like, if you you're gonna try to build your army to not have to do that, but if you go up against Custodes, you're like, well, I guess I'm gonna take two in this recon yeah. thing. Well, I mean, I start with fifteen every time. I'll just you would always you're do like I'll one of the two it. armies to do. Yeah. But still, uh, yeah, the most popular army in the game. It's not Ultramarines. It's not Ultramarines. Most. Marines players will start with at least 10, 11. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I was just saying. That's not 15. Yeah. That's still... literally not 15. Anyways, the, there's only like two strategies that cost four, and they're broken. Yeah, I think three would be a good spot. But I feel like that would kind of, or that would kind of break up some of the issues with secondaries. What if they just add six more secondaries? No, that's, that's what I've been advocating for. Yeah. But what would they be? Uh, who knows? Like... Well, if we look at ITC, they pretty much covered everything ITC was doing. And then except some. Except for, yeah, I think pretty much everything. Yeah, they covered, like, all of them. And then... So, no, we need, no. like, a... Oh, what was it? The uh, Mark for Death? Yeah. I think a Mark oh, for yeah. Death would be really good. That's... Where you I pick agree. four things, you know. They kind of do the opposite, where they did, like, while we stand, we fight. Yes, pick. but why not have... I agree. The Bizarro version of that. Yeah. It, I think it makes it too easy. Like, it's just an easy secondary take. Yeah, yeah but I so was deploy scramblers. Like, I think deploy some, scr- I think deploy scramblers not going to end up the way it is right now because it's too easy. And like they have whole more, but they don't have whole more. They have whole more than half the objectives. Yeah, domination, I feel like needs to be like when there's four objectives, it's like got to hold. Well, whole more is a primary. Domination is secondary too. Domination just feels wrong. It does. Domination feels like you never want to take it because it's. You are. You uh, have such extreme control of the board. Unless there's exactly mean, five objectives, you never want it. You mean you have to be dominating the board to get yeah, domination? Yeah. Huh. Who would have guessed? I mean, it's just like a win more secondary. Yeah. It's okay. just one of those secondaries that if you take it, like you're like, yeah, that's how bad you're gonna lose. <laughs> like maybe if, maybe they don't need more secondaries. Maybe they just need to. I think a few of them need a little bit of change. Yeah, we need to get them like the, all choosable because I don't think I've ever chosen domination. And I think all, like I said, all the second ones are bad. And I've chosen, but I just can't get them to work. Right. Like the actions, there's only one of them that's really. I think the actions no, are the close actions are to. Good. Yeah, I think the actions are pretty close. Like, because they could they teeter on like getting to the point to where they could be absurd. Yeah. Like if you word that slightly differently, like if they just have to do the action and you immediately get the points at the end of that turn. Like raise the banners. So which is why scramblers is so good because yeah. that's how it works. Yeah, but if all of them were that but way, like it would raise be the banners, so we're just like good. that one, that one, that one. End of my turn three. Yeah. yeah, it would be crazy. So like, there's really, it's in as good of a spot as it could be in. Um, and something like Zach's army, he could break up his custodes, put one there, and be like, raise the banners. You shot how much at it and didn't kill it? Oh well, yeah. Which is still good in a. A six objective game, I think it'd be actually one of the right things to do. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree with that. Um, 
it's just there's just a a lot going on with it. I I like Ninth Isle. I think it's complex. I, 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 just, I think it's a good addition overall. I really like I said, I like the idea of the secondaries. They definitely put a lot of work into them, and it's infinitely better than the cards. So I agree. I'm not surprised that it has a little bit of quirks to it because it's the first time I that I know they've done this. Yeah. So yeah, Have I think we just give them time. Do we think that? Okay, so like obviously the balance is is nowhere close to balanced right now. No. But I don't as, think it's. I think. The edition is balanced enough. I don't, I don't think, think the codexes are. Yeah, the codexes aren't balanced. But I think the edition is built the right way. Yeah. yeah. I don't think any army is unplayable by the edition. Guard being one of the ones that got hurt the most. And I still think it's playable. Yeah, you definitely want to. But when the new codexes come out, like. Because they released the Necrons Codex, they released a bunch of new models, or the Space Marines released a bunch of new models. With every codex. They're not going to do that with every. No. every well, codex. why? Won't that make it balanced? Well. Just the. Just the the history of GW is what it's like two or three armies a year get a whole new line right. because you got also got to remember they're doing Age of Sigmar they're doing uh what's the football one blood, blood, blood bowl. bowl they do blood bowl they've got necromunda like you yeah, got to remember right. all there there's so many other things that that company is handling new plastic and releases on that Warhammer is just a small portion of what they're trying to do. I think you're right to an extent. I think they actually are going to, like, main codex, like Blood Angels and Space Wolves and, and like, Death Guard, all these side codes. Well, Death Guard maybe, because we've already seen new models for Death Guard. Yeah. So I think, like, the other Space Marines aren't going to get much, maybe a character or two, maybe well, Sanguinary. Right. Well, because well, they're doing two in a month. They did, like, six months of previews for... Yeah, for the, the Space Necrons. Marines so, and Necrons. So I think you're going to get something. I don't think you're going to get nothing. Because it, it definitely... I'm holding out hope for, like, Primaris Sanguinary Guard, Primaris Wolfen. But business-wise, it makes sense, because what's the easiest way to sell a book? Oh, hey, look, here's a bunch of new models that go with it. Well, now you need the book. Yeah, all right, well... But wouldn't it be smart, like, when Tyranids come out, or Gene Stiller Cult, or something like Tyranids and Guard? Like, they both need... They, Gene Stiller or, Cult just got a bunch of new models. Yep. I do think Tyranids will get new models. Ultramarines got Maybe a new updates. book, and then they got a new book again. like yeah. And a ton of models. And a ton of models. Like, yeah. they couldn't but do the Ultramarines are the face of the... That's and they were, they were... Yeah, they changed it to Primaris, so they just basically brought the rest yeah. of the army. If you were Games Workshop, wouldn't you release more stuff with every... Yes, I would. If I was Games Workshop, I would I would I factor think... in Wallet Fatigue, man. There Actually, are... I have a different plan if I was Games Workshop, but... I would release a kit for every army like two or three times a year. Agreed. At the same time. Yeah. Same time. Because, yes, you have your hobbyists that have like four or five armies or all the armies and go out. We have a lot of people that have like one or two armies. Right? And if you updated the armies equally one or two, three times a year, like this isn't taking codex. You gotta get your codexes out. But if you did that, you would sell a shit ton of I mean, yes, you would have fatigue in the middle where you would probably be selling AOS or whatever, you would notice that. But that day, that week, that month or whatever, your profits would be insane because yeah, you would sell, like, everything. February, June, June, October, boom. And it doesn't have to be a new kit for every... Like, you could do, like, an update here of just five dudes and then a character here and then a big model for a couple armies. Like, you could... You, I'm not talking, like, a tank for every army, you know? But, yeah. I just think so, of, like, the effort they put into the Necrons to release. Like, all the new models, the, right. the insanity of the quality of the models. Like, they can't do that every month, right? No. They certainly can't do that twice a month every month, which is the Codex release time. So but if they've been planning 9th edition... For that Like, long, it takes years. And these kits take a while, you know? I don't know about years, but... But if they've been planning and they got all these kits backed up... Like, there's a rumor there's going to be a new army in December or January. Yeah, there probably will be. But that's why I'm saying. I don't think that they could do that level of release for every every codex i just don't think they can it's just not it's just not feasible to have that many i think the main codex is will get something like that. it's like I when think... it's like in magic like the solution in magic isn't release more sets right and that's what you're basically well, saying they've released a new have, set every seen... four months for 20 years yeah so imagine if they start doing it every month well, they're only gonna be doing it every month for like a year twice a month like they're only gonna do it like every <laughs> month for, until the codex is get out but then by the time all the codexes come out, then they have a cycle of psychic because awakenings. We're just all spoiled off of magic, getting a new set new cards every four, every four months. months. Yeah. Models are a lot harder to do than yeah. print cardboard. Well, you, there's so many, what, there's 14 different factions-ish? Actually, no. More than that. 
Uh, if you look at it really, we have Eldar, Imperial, Orcs, Tyranids, Necrons. Chaos. Chaos. That's it. There's six but, major but like, Imperial's big, I agree, but... Well, and their lines are totally different. Like, Ash, uh, oh, and, and Sister's got a new line. So, so yeah, yeah, you want that into Imperium. Yeah, like, Sister, yeah. Like, so, there's... so you got, like, three in Imperium that are big. Guard, Space Marines. Sisters, Custodes are all like kind of one thing. Well, say an addition lasts three ish years, maybe more. Okay. They're going to make money the entire time. Yeah. yeah. So this year they did the Marines and the Necrons. Mm-hmm. Next year they do two more. The yeah, I think they, they will do, do like two a year. Well, uh, but not, saying, not like main, every faction. Like main, even main codexes, there's like nine. Like, because Drakari is just the offshoot. Drakari and Hargo Coins, all that. This is an offshoot of, you know, Eldar. Yeah, they're all kind of yeah, like, and I'll they, agree so with like that. If you break it, saying, if you lump it into six, but if you're saying, if you're saying like, no, no, is, that would mean there would be nothing for the rest of the Imperium guys because Space Marines got all that. No, shit. no, I don't mean like, but I was saying before, like you guys, like the other ones are guard different. It's like its own thing. Like if next time they do Eldar and Chaos, it's all of it, like it was for this. I don't know. Like they get their own box. Is, you know. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Like, but I think there'll be more releases, but not quite on the scale we got. The last will it unbalance it or will it fix the balance? No. The well, codex is all about models. balance. Yeah. It's not gonna, the models don't fucking matter. It's, it's the, the rules. It's the Most rules. of the time, yeah. the models aren't even good. Just, yeah, yeah. New models tend to not be good because you buy them either way. Yeah. So, I don't know anybody buying that bunker. Everybody bought Eradicators, though. Oh, people buy the bunker. It's sweet looking. It is sweet, but it's not. And if good. you're playing bigger games, it's dope. You can't even deploy it. In a competitive game. That's what I'm saying. It's, but if you're not, <laughs> like, but they build a model that you can't even use. But like we were talking, like a lot of people don't play this game for competitive. They play it for. They play. They want. It's Warhammer 40k. They're playing 40k. If I'm playing 20,000 games on this like floor size table, I believe I'm playing. Your ass have like two or three, three of them bastards. <laughs> they can shoot everything they can see. Everything. I think it's an epic fail that they made. For decades. They made something called a Hammerfall bunker. It doesn't, it doesn't do, fall. And it doesn't deep strike. Even yeah. though in the little bracket... I thought it did. No. Even in the little, little lore picture, thing... It's coming down. Yeah, the it's supposed to be... Uh, yeah. They talk about a drop pod that's a tank. Yeah. It doesn't. But it doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. It, it, should, guys, like, it should like do damage <laughs> when it hits you. you guys all it should hammer fall. It should, it should come down, you know, make a little crater, and then... It should do like the Moloch thing. See, and you guys complain about Space Marine balance. They took the deep strike away from the bunker. Yeah. Balanced. Oh <laughs> yeah, balance it to unplayable. Let's get it. If anybody, I feel like they just forgot that. If part. anybody's listening, we're gonna need an FAQ so you can deep strike that bunker. Well, they, Dude, didn't, they didn't tell the lore guy the rules on See? it. He's like, this thing don't. It if they read on that, or if they read that, everybody would lose their shit. They're like, Marines get more stuff. Yeah. but that just makes sense. But it's unplayable otherwise. More stuff. You still can't deploy it. We know, more stuff. We know how you feel. I'd be about like, stuff. I'd be like, you wasted somebody's time of ratting this already unplayable model that will still be unplayable when you could have been fixing the fucking apothecary. Yeah. <laughs> it can still revive, you know, ATV. That would be my answer to that. Yeah. But, I'd be like, the same guy could have changed the text. Well, they can fix both in the same effect. I would hope. Do we feel like it's going to get better? Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for sure. Even... 100%. By the end of 8th edition... When all the codes are out, it'll be... It, if 9th edition gets to the balance that late 8th edition had... The game will be incredible. It'll be amazing. Like, the game's already so much better now than it was in 8th. Because I got Strategy bored... Strategy-wise, for sure. Yeah, I got bored in 8th. I felt like every time I wanted to build a list, it was the same shit. Can I just kill that before they kill me? Yes. And it was like... It was like, what can I play the most of to make their killing bad... And my killing acceptable. And turns out it was two hundred cultists. It was for a <laughs> long time. Like it sucked though. That was the thing. It was like it wasn't really fun putting two hundred cultists on the table. But it's like the math was just absurd. I would see I, when I always first thought of Warhammer, I wanted to see the horde armies. Orcs. Oh yeah, it sounded cool. Yeah, that's why I played the horde armies. I was like, it's, look, there's a bunch of look at all. These yeah, things. until you have to do a fucking movement phase and paint them all. Yeah. You know, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> the movement right. phase was the worst, man. Not the rolling three hundred shots. No, I like I roll them ten at a time just to irritate Chad. <laughs> God, <laughs> that would be pretty irritating. That's where I learned to break them up because it's like cultists. I'm like, okay, well, all these guys are going to shoot at your knight. Yeah. And it just takes a while to roll all them dice. So 
I don't know. Anything I love. You wanna, I, I'm very happy with. Anything Knight. you want to see? Uh, I mean, that, what do you think? What's the one thing you think you'll make, make it better? I I New think primer. having ways. I think having ways to fuck with uh, selection of. I think being able to double dip into a secondary would be cool. That, it would, doesn't benefit any of my armies, but if I was playing Astro Militarium, I would want that. If I'm playing against Custodes. You did, what, what you said how hard it was to take secondaries. Imagine if you could take two movement based secondaries. I almost took kill more just because I thought he would split his dudes up. You should have taken that but just to did, make it hurt have... a little bit if he did it. I, I, I think he still splits them up, but it just yeah, doesn't definitely. matter. I definitely split the 10 squad. He definitely split the 10, but still the mind thinking that far ahead would have been. I mean, he acts like he didn't lose all of his armor. <laughs> <laughs> Look! Okay. <laughs> Like, yeah, you might have killed more one turn. The, the first turn. Hey, the three <laughs> more would have been more than the zero I got from turn. while we stayed. Woo! He didn't yeah. kill a model in the first turn, and he didn't kill a model in the last turn, because he didn't have no models left. <laughs> so that's three turns where he could have killed, but in the meantime, I have 15 Terminators left. He has two Hellblasters left. And and one they're going to kill themselves anyway, one so. One blew himself up. <laughs> what I heard. So it's like, Almost did you really me. kill more? Because <laughs> I don't dead. think he did. That's funny. Didn't even have my car. <laughs> that's why I think that's what I would like to see is something like that. I think it'd be cool. Or if they actually... Okay. E the problem is, even if they make... I guess if all the secondaries have better wording, except for the ones that are already in a good spot, then it would feel less bad when you play against an army that you can't take second. Because my army's the same way. Like, taking secondaries against me, mm -hmm. there is, like, no good choice. I mean, I've purposely built the list to be like that. Like, custodes are inherently Well, that's good the that. strategy of ninth edition. But yeah. it's like... I would soup with guard because I want to be able to play guard, but it just it's bad in ninth edition for this. Yeah, the secondary, the entire secondary chunk of the game, I think needs to be looked at. But that's I don't know if it's fixing the wording on some of them or adding some secondaries or giving it an option to manipulate the way it works. Like just it's just not quite right. But that's my only real complaint about it. I like. I like the terrain rules overall. Yeah. I like, I like the... Uh, I think it could get a little stale with having the Terminant Mission Pack just being the same missions over and over and over. But right now, the game's young enough that it's not there's, bothering There's 30 of them or something, right? No. No, I mean, there's we're like, playing Strike Force, so you have to play... No, but there's still... There's more than six like there used to be. Right, but you, you used to have six missions, but you had every map layout on all yeah, those yeah, six missions. Yeah, yeah, map layout. Option. I yeah, do, I this one is the same map, the same mission every time. Like, but, I can see where that could get kind of old, but it's not old for me yet. Yeah, I will say they dated it, like they do chapter approved. So I think they are planning on releasing one. Sure. Like, if they do that, that would be. Nice. They do that like every six months or whatever. I, like, I think that, like looking at the book and the the way it's laid out and everything, I think that is the plan. Like next year, around chapter approved time, maybe like middle summer, we'll get like a turn pack twenty twenty one. But yeah. I want them. I don't want them to have a new turn pack and eliminate the old ones. I want to like. No, I think but, that's exactly what they should do. I think do. that's exactly what they do, because the old ones... But you can still play the old ones. You could. Old ones. Yeah. You're like, do you want to play this one or this one? Yeah, like, it's up to the TOs to say, we're going to have tournament 2020 and 2021. Have, like, in, if we stay in ninth edition for three years, going back and playing a mission for year one tournament pack could be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, 2022, we're playing from this yeah. to 2020. Yeah, okay. I'm going to warp that. I mean, I could see where that could be an issue if they don't update, but they're, yeah. if they're going to update, that'd be great. Um Especially with the not being able to change the maps, I agree with it. Yeah, and I mean, with those tournament packs, they can really like adjust the meta game that yeah. way in ways without nerfing yeah, models. Not, there's different secondaries than the main book, so if you find some secondaries getting stale or, or not working, like you said, they can just tweak them in the like they did for the tournament pack. Yeah, that would be super cool. But I'm happy with it. As much complaining as I do, I'm I'm happy with ninth. Way happier with ninth than eighth. Eighth, I was not excited about playing 40k at all toward the end it was just the same shit so and the little rules updates i like a lot i mean overall i think that's really good it like, is i 100 percent agree i just think it would feel bad if you're a nids player only i don't think only nids but nids are definitely the worst well like one of those players that's yeah. like one of the lowest armies and like your friends are all playing space marines or something yeah. like it's just gonna fucking suck i mean that's more of a codex thing though yeah, yeah. I mean, in eighth, that is true. It's a hundred percent codex. In eighth thing. edition, when I was, because I was, still, I came in at the end of eighth, play the game. Like, I got you know the hang of like, okay, I just have to kill a lot of stuff, and I'm like, well, this is 
My army doesn't really kill everything the best, and it doesn't really melee everything the best, and I don't psychic anything the best, I'm just here to exist. But like, the ninth, the strategy of ninth edition has made me enjoy the game a lot more than I did even in the beginning. I just, I just wanted to play it in the beginning because that's what everybody else is doing, and it'll be fun, the models look cool, and now I'm just like, man, the strategy behind I'll, I'll just find myself like hours deep like well what if i build it this way to do this and... well and the cool part about the thing that hooks me on 40k is like a competitive player versus magic is in magic you try to build your deck to to have as many overlapping of the same effect as possible or mm -hmm. consistent well in 40k you always are going to have that consistency yeah. aside from dice so good. you can really sit down and go okay well if this is my list these are the things I'm going to try to execute. And then you can look at the other meta lists and you can know exactly the possibilities they have to execute every time. And you can actually just run the numbers mentally on where your games are going to go uh, based on just pure math, which is super cool. Because in Magic, you had to factor in, sometimes you just get land flooded. Just get land screwed, yeah. And some people say, like, you can roll, like, you can roll dice, but you're rolling a lot more dice than 60 cards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the sometimes probabilities... your opponent makes all their four ups, and yeah, but, sometimes. I mean... But that's way. I feel like those sorts of blowouts are way less common in Warhammer than they were in Magic. I even I when we were building like the most top tier decks, pile shuffling in between every game and everything. There was still in Magic, you know, it's one in five games. You have. Uh... You go out, drew no land. Okay. Yeah. But in this, it's you can still. I just love the consistency of the math in the game. That's what got me hooked in hooked. Well, that in the painting. But from a competitive aspect, I love being able to just sit and run the numbers. Even if I can't get a game in. Yeah. You're not likely to lose because of dice rolls. Yeah. You are likely to make mistakes. Yes, and that's what I love is every time like I make a mistake, I see the mistake. Most of the time, I don't see every mistake I make. But when I make them, it's cool to go, okay, well, that was a me problem. I didn't just get blown out. Because even when you feel like you get blown out, you probably did some yeah. some bad things. Like I'd say there's a percent of time you're not going to lose to the dice. I agree yeah. wholeheartedly. All right, so uh, question of the week should be: What is your favorite thing about Ninth Edition? What is your least favorite thing about Ninth Edition? Tell us one or the other. I want to know. And why is it the psychic? Secondary? And why is it the psychic <laughs> secondaries? <laughs> uh, all the socials will be in the episode description. Uh, when this goes up, I will be live doing Hobby Day. So feel free to come in, hang out. You can shoot the shit with us, but I will definitely be live streaming hobbies when this episode's live. So come in, hang out with us, shoot the shit. Chad's usually in chat. Uh, Troy is in chat some of the time. He works a lot more now, and Zach is definitely working. So yeah. But you can also play Stream Raiders, which is super fun. So <laughs> we'll catch you guys later. Later.